Hello everyone and welcome to the Digital Signatures webinar presented by GlobalSign. I'm Chris Algieri with the GlobalSign marketing team and I want to thank you for joining us today. At this time I would like to introduce Sid Desai. Sid is the head sales engineer at GlobalSign. He's responsible for implementing advanced EPKI solutions for our customers. He's an IT expert with a strong passion for sales and consulting. Uh, he really understands the technicalities of these applications and can translate them into everyday terms. So please feel free to send in any questions for Sid. So now I'll hand it off to you, Sid. All right. Um, thank you, Chris, for the introduction. Um, now that we have covered all the logistics, let's go ahead and jump into the material today. So today we'll, be start, we'll start off with an introduction to digital signatures and why you need them. We'll go into defining and explaining the raw guts of a digital signature share with you how digital signatures work, cover some of the solutions out there in the market pl marketplace today, and wrap up with how to find the ideal signing solution for you. So digital signatures are quickly becoming a trending topic across different private, public, and government organizations. Um, no matter how big, small, or large your um, organization is, the interest in digital signatures is pretty strong these days. And I think mostly due to the fact that people want to automate their resource-heavy paper-based signing processes. According to an industry study recently published by Gartner, the overall market for electronic signature software and services grew by 48% from 2010 to 2011, with similar growth expected in 2012 and beyond. About 3% of contracts today are signed digitally. But in the next three or four years, the number is, of course, expected to increase by up to 50%. The emergence of cloud-based and software-as-a-service-based models has lowered the barriers to market entry, and this has resulted in a rapid influx of new uh, competition in the market. In 2009, only about 5% of electronic signature activity was software-as-a-service-based. Projections show that figure uh, should go up to about 50% in 2014. The truth is that the digital signature market has seen increased adoption rates over the last few years. Um, notably, the, u the usage by life insurance companies has increased from 47% in 2007 to 74% in 2013. Even the U.S. Army today has deployed an e-signature solution for over their 1 million personnel. So from a legal perspective, there are legislations such as UETA, which is the Uniform Electronic Transactions Act, and the eSign Act that have helped standardize and facilitate the use of digital signatures in place of paper-based signatures. Many industries have based their acceptance of digital signatures on the guidelines put forth in these two acts. Just to give you an example, the FDIC and the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, which is the SEC, have issued standards for the use of digital signatures in the financial sector. And then there is the Title 21 CFR Part 11 that dictates the use of electronic records and signatures for the FDA. The, these Code of Federal Regulations, or CFRs, um, as some people call them, vary state by state. For example, each state's professional engineering board dictates the acceptance of digital signatures for the architecture, engineering, and construction sector. Um, as far as cost savings go, digital signatures lead to reduced paper and transportation costs, increased return on investment from shortening the actual signing transaction times, and on top of everything else, provide increased security around record keeping. Recent industry success stories cite millions of dollars being saved in administrative paper-related processes, 75% reduction in error rates, and 85% reduction in shipping costs. In addition to mailing and transportation savings, there are savings associated with the elimination of manual processes, um, such as mail sorting, document handling, scanning, etc. These typically result in 70 to 80% improved efficiencies and error reduction where more than 50% of the paper signatures require rework due to incomplete forms and so on. In a study on benefits of e-signatures, Ombud Research came up with the following numbers. With the use of digital signatures, it cost $20 less per document compared to paper-based signatures. So as you can see, the cost benefits are plenty. Um, then, of course, there are other soft benefits associated with the overall improved customer experience, reduced cycle times, 
improved compliance, and environmental impact, just to name a few. Some institutions have experienced cycle times reduced from weeks to days or from days to hours, have their shipping costs savings up to 80%, and error rates reduced to less than 5%, and all these investments have paid off in less than two years. So before we get into the types of digital signing solutions, let's get a quick overview on what digital signatures are. Firstly, you have to understand that not all electronic signatures are digital signatures. Electronic signature is a broad term used to refer to any type of digitized version of a physical signature and can be as simple as a scanned image of a handwritten signature. They may or may not be verified by a third party and often almost do not contain any security measures to prevent changes to the document. Digital signatures are a more secure type of electronic signature and are based on public key infrastructure, that's PKI. When someone receives a digitally signed document, he or she knows where the document came from via the identity of the signer, when it was signed, thanks to a third party timestamp that is applied at the time of signing, and that the content of the document has not been altered since the signature was last applied. There are cryptography operations applied to the document that helps keep it entirely secure. We'll look at how this works in a couple of slides. So, at the root of it, digital signatures are made up of two key parts, a digital certificate and the data being signed. A digital certificate is kind of a virtual passport. A third party verification entity called a certificate authority verifies your identity and issues you a certificate. Since the certificate is unique to you, using it to sign a document is a way for you to prove, yes, it's really me signing this document. When you apply a digital signature, a cryptographic operation binds your digital certificate and the data being signed, for example, a PDF or any other document, into one unique fingerprint. The uniqueness of these two components of a signature, the signer's identity and the data, are what makes digital signatures a viable replacement to wet ink signatures. And because signature is unique to the signer and a third party validated certificate was used to apply the signature, the recipients now know that it was actually you who signed it, which satisfies the authentication component of a digital signature. And since it was your certificate that was used to sign the document, you cannot later claim that it wasn't you who signed it, which makes your signature completely non-repudiable and legally binding. Finally, because the signature is unique to the document, when the signature is verified, it checks that the data in the document matches what was in there when the signature was applied. Even the slightest change to the original document would cause this check to fail. This keeps the message integrity intact. For those of you who haven't seen what a digital signature looks like, this is what it is in a, in a PDF, um, Adobe PDF file, and a Microsoft Word document. So when you look at a typical workflow for digital signatures, you first create the document with whatever enterprise tools you have available. The typical Microsoft Word, Adobe PDF, Microsoft Excel, etc., are the ones most commonly used to create documents. You then simply digitally sign the document by using some of the built-in options available in these tools, or you can leverage a plugin, which could be a third-party developed software that uses your locally or centrally stored digital certificate. To finish the workflow, you send the digitally signed document via email or any other workflow automation tools that your company uses. So earlier we talked about a cryptography operation that takes place every time you use a digital signature. These two images, in my opinion, summarizes the process pretty well. If you look at what happens behind the scenes during the signing process, a hash function of the data that you want digitally signed is encrypted using the signer's, pr signer's private key and along with the digital certificate is attached to the data. Together, the binding of the certificate with the digitally signed hash comprises of a digitally signed document or data. On the verification end, where the recipient of the document receives your file, the data and the signature are then separated 
after some recipient side hashing and decrypting the hashes are compared. If the hashes are equal, then the signature is valid. Any mismatch in the hashes that could have resulted in some tampering with the data results in an invalid signature. So as you can see, there's built-in tamper prevention with digital signatures. So now that you know what happens behind the scenes when you're signing a document digitally, let's take a look at what you need and where you should start. To begin digitally signed documents, you need two things at a minimum. One, a digital certificate, and two, a digital document. A digital certificate ties the identity of a specific person, organization, or department to what is known as a public key. This public key is unique to the person, department, or organization it's assigned to. Most digital signatures are used for PDF signing, but in some cases, they can be used for Word, Excel, email documents, and in those cases, you need a separate certificate for signing those applications. Lastly, you may or may not need a digital, digital signature workflow engine. A digital signature workflow engine leverages the reuse of digital certificate on top of a signing platform that manages the entire signing lifecycle for you. But since these workflow engines can be pretty expensive, most companies, small or medium, choose to leverage the built-in signing engines that come with the Microsoft Office solutions as well as the Adobe PDF software. So even though digital certificates can be stored locally on your computers, for maximum security, digital certificates can also be stored on cryptography hardware such as a USB token, smart cards, or a hardware security mo module, or an HSM as we call it. Token-based solutions are best suited for individuals or departments that need to sign a moderate amount of documents. The benefits to storing the certificate on a token include security, portability, and convenience. HSM-based solutions are best suited for organizations that need to digitally sign large volumes of documents. Used in conjunction with either an internally developed or off-the-shelf automated PDF signature software, such as Adobe Lifecycle or Assertia, digital signatures can be instantly applied to a large number of documents, such as bank statements or bills on creation. Organizations who do not have the internal resources or desire to maintain an on-premise HSM may prefer to use a hosted solution where a third party certificate authority hosts a virtual HSM containing the organization's signing keys. In this case, the certificate authority is responsible for maintaining the security around the HSM and meeting the PKI baseline requirements for the signing keys so your organization doesn't have to. Hosted solutions offer an easy to implement cost-effective alternative to a fully owned and operated HSM. So what's the ideal digital signature solution? Well, the ideal digital signature solution is the one that provides cost-effective digital signatures to sign multiple file types you typically use. Of course, it should be easy to use. It should offer zero or next to none resistance for all types of users because we all have to agree that the last thing you want to add to, uh, to your company business is to add a new workflow for your users and complicate things. It should also offer multiple signature options. Sometimes you would like to keep the signing processes and procedures inside your organization. In that case, you would like a solution that works locally. It should still be easily manageable in a way that best suits your internal processes and provide options to integrate with HR, ID, security policies, and user management systems such as Active Directory. The solution should easily validate all signatures in the least intrusive manner as possible. And of course, when it comes to standards, the solutions must comply with the digital signature standards. These standards are used to ensure the integrity of the electronic documents as well as the identity of the signer. And they are typically adopted by governments, industries, and software vendors all around the world. Lastly, the solution should support your organization's existing policies, procedures, and technologies and work with existing complementary technologies. So the burning question here is where should you or your organization start? Well, 
I want to say you should definitely start by asking the right questions. You first got to figure out what are your typical use cases. What are your most commonly used applications and processes that today require paper-based signatures? How many users or how many signatures are we talking about? Are there any potential deployment costs, product costs, training, renewal, support costs that one has to bear up front? What are the typical installation times that would have minimal impact on your existing IT maintenance? For those of you thinking on how do I deploy this to potentially hundreds of thousands of your employees, think about this. You already have an onboarding plan in place. Your HR and IT work together on creating the right HR and IT policies, and you already have a user directory or a management system in place like Active Directory. The candidate who will be using the digital signature solution is already vetted in your organization. All right, so if any of the things I talked about today were confusing to you, or if you still have any more questions, please feel free to get in touch with us directly. Definitely check our website, www.globalsign.com, or follow us on any social media networks to get the most up-to-date information on such topics. Now let's take a look at the questions that some of you have submitted in the chat box. One of the first questions we have is, um, can people share certificates? Well, to answer that, um, I want to say that certificates are, are issued to either, either an individual or an organization or a department. So certificates are, you know, typically when it comes to organizations, if you need one or multiple people to sign the same document with the same identity, you could go with an organization or a department signed certificate, um, and you can add multiple people to, be, uh, to use that certificate. The second question we have here is how does this solution compare to other solutions out there like DocuSign or ARX CoSign? Um, well, there are multiple solutions out there for digitally signing documents. A global sign solution is certificate based and it includes a trusted third party timestamp. So the only software you essentially need once you have your certificate is the software you use to create the document. For example, in this case, it could be a Microsoft Office document or an Adobe PDF file. There are many solutions out there that work um, you know, a little bit differently and they don't use certificate-based authentication. Um, and I'm sure you know, there are companies out there that also let people upload their documents, which in, in my opinion, uh, no one should be doing. All right, um, one of the other question is, what's the pricing model? Um, how does pricing work in this? in this scenario. Hmm. Well, when it comes to pricing, you know, you generally, it's based on uh, per certificate and the price depends on the validity of period of the certificates, which can be anywhere between one to three years. Um, it also depends on the total number of certificates needed and the volumes of signatures per year. Um, so in case your organization ha ha has thousands of employees that sign thousands of documents every year, the pricing changes accordingly. 